Good afternoon. This is Healthy Living OKC, and we are doing our first online chair yoga class. Welcome. I've got my coworkers here today, and we're going to do everything that we can to try to keep you healthy during this time. So we're going to start out with just taking deep breaths. I want everybody to sit back in their chair, let the feet just fall comfortably, and let your hands just fall alongside you. Anatomic position is with the hands rotated. Close your eyes and start taking deep breaths. Music, please. Or is it on my, oh, there we go. Okay. So we are taking deep breaths. We are breathing as much as we can in and out through our nose. This is called yogic breathing. And what this type of breathing does is it helps slow the heart rate and it helps you to calm down and just start connecting to your body. As we go into deeper stretches, when you start to feel pressure in the muscles or the joints, you can use your breathing to try to help ease into a stretch. However, I will say, if something is bothersome to your body, please stop and just take a break and then pick it up when you can. All right, so we're gonna open our eyes and we're gonna scoot toward the front of our chair. Place the feet nice and firmly on the floor. Take a deep inhale all the way up. And now exhale, sweep down toward the floor. Inhale all the way back up. It's like a swan dive. Exhale down. Inhale all the way back up. One more, exhale down. Inhale all the way up. Let's bring the hands together this time. Clasp the hands, turn the palms up. Tuck your chin into your chest, belly button into the spine. Lower the arms and then press your upper back towards your chair. Okay, so I'm pushing forward through the palms, but my back is leaning toward the chair, chin tucked in, so you're rounded like a cat through your spine. Take a deep inhale, lengthen up through the back, all the way up. We're gonna grab the right wrist and go into a lateral press over to the side. Use your breathing. I want you to keep your shoulders open. So instead of closing here, keep the shoulders as open as you can. Take another deep inhale up. Grab the left wrist, go to your lateral press. Inhale all the way up to the center. Exhale, float the arms down. Bring your hands to your knees. Once again, we're going into a cat stretch. So I tuck my chin. My belly button goes into my spine. I'm gonna hold on to my knees with my fingertips and I'm gonna push through my low back toward the chair. So I'm rounded through the back like a cat. Just continue with your deep breathing right here. Now let's take a deep inhale, lengthen up. Slide the hands toward your upper thighs. Elbows are gonna squeeze in and we're gonna lead through the belly, letting the chest come forward. I'm squeezing my elbows in. So now my back is in a U shape. And the last part of this, if it doesn't bother your neck, is looking up toward the ceiling. Still taking those deep breaths. This is a back extension. So we went from flexion to extension. Let's take a deep inhale, come up. Hands to the knees, tilt the pelvis, round the back, hold on. My back is pulling toward the chair like a magnet. Just normal breathing through your nose if you can. Let's take a deep inhale, lengthening up. Slide the hands in, elbows squeeze, lead with the belly, the ribs, and then finally, look up. Swaying through the spine. Let's take a deep inhale, coming all the way back into the center. Do another deep inhale up. Exhale, sweep down to the floor. Inhale all the way up. Bring the hands in and into your heart. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna place our hands on the knees. We're gonna turn to the right 
and just look as far as you can over your right shoulder. What I always like to say in class is, even though we rely on those cameras that we have as we back out of a parking space, you still need to be able to turn your head to look over your shoulder. So use the breath, turn as far as you can. Release, facing toward the front and turning over toward the left. Turn as far as you can. And let's release, coming to the center. Extending the arms straight up out in front. We're gonna take the wrist and just circle. And I used to think this was a big waste of time doing this, but when I stopped doing it, People that have arthritis in their hands and their wrists and their fingers would come in to me and say, oh my goodness, you didn't do our hands today. So just play along with it if you don't like it. And let's reverse. Stopping in the center, flex the fingers back like a stop sign. Really pull those fingers back like you're trying to pull them towards your forearm. Point the fingers forward, tuck under like you're trying to touch your wrist with your fingertips. You feel the stretch in your forearms? Yes. Now we're gonna take the thumb and tuck it in, make a fist. Circle. Snap, crackle, pop, right? And then reverse. Oops, I forgot to say do not disturb. What's new? I do that all the time. Bring the hands down. Okay guys, so from head to toe, we're gonna stretch. The first one we're gonna do is flexion of the shoulder. We're gonna take the right arm across the chest. My left hand is gonna go on my upper arm, right at my elbow. I'm gonna raise it up, and I say this is like my puppy looking at me. I want a treat. So I'm resting my chin right on top of my arm. And I'm using a little bit of pressure to push my arm across the chest. I'm feeling flexion right in the front of my shoulder. I'm gonna keep it here, but I'm gonna start to slowly let my hand go, but I'm still pushing. I'm still pushing across. Do you guys feel that? <coughs> yes. I've got a good Healthy Living OKC staff here. They have to agree. <laughs> All right, let's drop down. Now from flexion to extension, bring the arm back behind your back. Take your left hand up and we're gonna place it on the outside of your head. So now that same joint that we were flexing across, we're opening up. Now I want you to focus more on your right arm that's back behind your back than you're focusing on this on your head. Okay, this is secondary. So focus more on the right arm, pressing it into your back, opening your shoulder. Use your breath. This is one, this is a stretch that our physical therapist gave me when I had a frozen shoulder, which was not fun, but it's a really good stretch. We're gonna release our hand from our head and we're gonna turn and look down toward the floor and then place the hand back and just get a gentle press right here. Gentle press. So like I said, we're using our breath to connect to where we're feeling the most pressure and trying to breathe through it, relax through the stretch. Release your hand first on your head. Look forward, release. Undo the hand from back behind. And we're gonna take that arm out at a 90 degree angle and we're just gonna circle through. Range of motion. Work in the range of motion. And sometimes with the hip joint and the shoulder joint, you'll hear a clunking, kind of popping maybe. And that's okay as long as it's not painful, okay? It's just like when you pop your fingers. Let's go reverse. So people can pop their knuckles. That's the same deal as when you kind of get a little popping through your shoulder or your hip. Okay, knees are different, elbows are a different story. It's your ball and socket. Okay, let's release. All right, let's do 
the other side. Take that left hand, bring it up and over. Puppy dog wanting its treat. Place your hand right at the elbow. Start to push across, push, and then ease the arm out. Keep pushing, keep pushing across. Take some deep breaths. that joint. All right, let's release it. We're swinging the arm back and behind. Take that right arm up, gentle press, stretching through the neck. My focus is on the left arm. Keep, stay right there. I'm going to put my phone on Do Not Disturb. hand, look down, replace the hand to the back of your head, gentle press, focusing on opening that left shoulder. So as I press my arm into my back, I'm opening that shoulder joint. your right hand first, bring it down, take it out to the side, circle through, range of motion. Clunk, 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 no. Yeah, that's okay. As long as it doesn't hurt, you're all right. Okay, let's reverse it. And those are the two exercises that we're gonna do for the shoulders today. We're gonna get one more and it's for the upper back. So we're going to bring the arms out in the front and we flip the palms away from each other. We're going to take the right hand and place it on top. Make sure your feet are about hip distance apart. So before I do anything right here, if I push my palms together and I lengthen through my neck, pull my tummy in, do you feel your muscles in your upper back? They start to kick in. Okay, so I don't have to do anything else but this, but we are going to do more. So we're going to Keep that position, push through the palms, tilt the pelvis. So what does that look like? This. Now I'm gonna round my back and bring my hands down between my knees. Drop the shoulders away from your ears. Keep pushing the palms against each other. You should feel the upper back opening up, opening those shoulder blades. Use your breath. Keep pressing into the palms. Breathe deeply. Let's come up and then switch it to the other side. Long neck, turtle neck, I like to say turtle neck, long. Drop the shoulders, push the palms against each other, draw your belly in, tilt your pelvis, and then round. Keep pressing the arms or the palms together. Feel that opening through your shoulder blades your breath. And let's release. Bring it down. Drop the hands down. Let's take the shoulders. Do some shoulder rolls. How do you feel? Good. good. We feel good. They feel good. That's great. I missed my class this morning. So hopefully you guys are doing this with us online. Because I really do miss all of you. We're not, hopefully we won't be doing this for very long. Okay, so we're gonna go from upper to mid back. We're gonna take our right leg and cross at the knees. We're gonna bring our hands into prayer hands. We're gonna rotate to the right, drop the elbow to your front leg. I am wedging my elbow into my leg. I'm gonna push the palms really hard against each other raise that right elbow and then I turn my gaze looking up toward the ceiling. So I'm feeling a stretch going into my left shoulder, into my mid-back, 
And if it bothers your neck to turn and look up toward the ceiling, you can look at your hands. You can even look down, whatever works. Use your breath and just try to feel where you're feeling the stretch. Also going into your right hip. Now let's go ahead and sit up. And we're gonna take that left hand and place it on your right leg. Your right hand is gonna reach back behind you. Do you see, I just see what hand, I look at my ring. <laughs> Turn and look over your shoulder. So I want you to sit up as tall as you can. Rotate and look over the back of your chair. Oh, look, you guys can look to the camera now. Say hi. So it's kind of hard to take deep breaths here, but do the best that you can to try to breathe through this. Feeling the stretch in through the spine. And let's go ahead and release, come to the front. Release that leg and we'll go to the other side. Switch it over, prayer hands, rotate towards your left, Drop your right elbow, wedge it into your leg. Push the palms against each other. Raise that left elbow at an angle toward the ceiling. Turn and look. Rotate your trunk. Shift your weight into your left hip. You feel the stretch? Yes! yes. Good. Use the breathing. of stretching through the spine. Use your breath. Now let's go ahead and release. Okay guys, undo your leg and we're going to turn over toward the left side and we're going to step our right foot back. Okay, so now we're going into more lower body. However, when you are tight in through your hip flexors and your hamstrings, that's what leads to this low back pain. So these are really important exercises to do. So we're going to place our hands right on top of your left thigh. Notice how I'm digging my toe into the floor. I want my knee to be underneath my hip, hands placed, and I'm going to ease my shoulders back just ever so slightly. And you're going to start feeling a tug through those quadricep muscles and hip flexor of the front of your right leg. Use your breath. You feel it? I have to keep asking you guys because yes. I'm not yes. used to such a small group. Yeah. Do you feel it? Do you feel yes. it? Good. All right, let's release. Now we're going to hinge at the hip and we're going to shimmy our leg back into an extension. This is called a runner's lunge. Okay? Now, some of you may be able to reach down to the floor and you may be able to leave your chair. Okay? So instead of sitting on my chair, I actually lift and I'm in a full runner's lunge. If you're not there yet, then make sure you use the chair. Use the chair. Good. Now, as you soften that right knee, place your hands back up onto your left thigh. And one more time, dig the toe in, knee under hip, and just ease back a little bit. Ah! Yes? Yes. Yeah. Flexibility is one of the first things that go as we age, so it's really important to keep 
as much flexibility as you can. And it's also what helps, I, I feel like it's the fountain of you that when you walk, you can tell if you're stiff, you don't want to have that shuffly little gait and walk in a little ball. Okay, let's release. Take that right foot, pull it in, and we are going toward the front corner of our chair. So we're going from the quadricep to the hamstring. So we're gonna take that right leg and extend it out. We're angled out this way, okay? My left hand is gonna grab the chair. My right hand is gonna crawl out toward my ankle. So now we're getting the back of the leg. That's your quadricep, your quadricep. hamstring muscles. If you feel comfortable letting go of the chair, maybe you're more flexible, you can bring your hands either side of your foot if you're there. More stretch. More stretch, yes. Take your time slowly coming up. Now we're not going anywhere yet. We're going back into that position, but I'm gonna have you lower the foot flat. We're headed back over. Hold on to the chair if you need to. So now, as you go into this stretch, you're going to feel it goes a little bit more into the back of your knee. Okay, so you're getting a stretch through the ham hamstrings, the back of the knee, the calf. Taking your time, let's come back up. Pull that foot in, turn all the way to the side of your chair. Now we're gonna rotate around to the back of the chair, grabbing hold of each side of it like you're holding a picture frame. And then the last part of this, you turn and look over your left shoulder. It's a very nice stretch going through your back. And you can smile for the camera. Yes. Oh, we are such camera hogs. <laughs> this feels good. It's yeah, good. it's good stuff. It's amazing how much stretching that you can actually get in a chair.
let's release, come forward, hinge at the hip, slide that left leg into extension, bring your hand to either side of the foot if you wish or if you can, and if you want to, go to full runner's lunge, coming off of the chair. Turn to your chair, soften that left knee as you bring your hands up to your right thigh, dig the toe in, knee goes back under, ease the shoulders back, and we're going right back into that big stretch for hip flexor quad, ease the shoulders back, ah. all right, let's release now, going toward the corner of the chair, taking your left foot, flexing the toe back. Your right hand can grab the chair. You can walk out towards your ankle. If you can, you can bring your hands to the floor. If you're not there yet, don't worry about that. You're gonna notice a change in your flexibility. You will, someday you'll be able to get into these deeper stretches. It just takes a little time. Now slowly come up. And same stretch, position foot change, take the foot flat and head back out. Holding on with your right hand if you need to, holding onto the chair, helping you to feel a little bit more steady. Remember, if you're doing this at home, folks, please don't get into a chair that's gonna roll around. Better if you're able to find a armless chair, but if you're not, just do the best that you can, but just make sure that the chair is steady and not gonna roll away or anything. Take your time coming up, and we're gonna pull the foot in, turn all the way to the side. We're rotating, grabbing the back of the chair, holding onto each side, using it to rotate the trunk, and then the final part of it, you turn and look over your right shoulder, stretching the back. You're trying to think about, oh, I'm going to breathe and relax through this. It's going to help my back, especially if you sit at a computer or you sit on the couch. These stretches are so doable. You can do these on commercial breaks, okay? If you're a TV watcher, just make it a little habit where you do a little stretch every time you think about it. Okay. Class, let's release the chair. And we're gonna turn and face toward the front. Our last stretch for the leg is crossing at the knee, or if you're not able, crossing with the foot at the ankle and hinging forward. If you're able, you're gonna come up here, use the hand to push the knee open, hinge at the hip, and feel that stretch through the hip, the glutes, to the back. This is a good stretch if you've got sciatic nerve issues. A lot of people will come and say, oh, my sciatica. This is one that you can do. It really does help.
going around into the low back, to the mid back, to the upper back, the back of the neck, all the way into the forehead, the brow, the jaw, the sides of the neck, to the chest, the shoulders, the elbows, wrists, and fingers. Let's place your hands right on top of your lap. Let your head fall to the right. Exhale, chin to the chest. Inhale to the left. Exhale, chin to the chest. Inhale to the right. And just continue in this motion. You can go at your own pace. Stop in the center, slowly lift the chin out of the chest, opening your eyes. Let's take a deep inhale, come all the way up, just like we started. Exhale down, inhale, come all the way up. Bring the hands in and into the heart. God bless, namaste, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Good job.